In this video, we're going to calculate the nominal flexural strength of the blow section with carbon fiber reinforced polymer strands. Uh, to find the flexural strength, we're going to need to use the strain compatibility approach. Um, we can see that it's a T section with six six tenth diameter strands. Uh, the area of these carbon fiber strands is different than our steel strands, so uh, just note that um, the area of these strands is uh, specified as 0.18 square inches, so our total area is six times this area. Our D we're taking from the extreme compression fiber to the centroid of all of our strands, uh, which is 20 inches. Uh, some of the information that we'll need, uh, we have our ultimate tensile strain um, for these strands as uh, 350 KSI. Um, the stiffness of the strands is uh, less than conventional strands, so our stiffness is um, 22,500. So our strain at ultimate is uh, 0.0156. The current limits uh, for these strands, um, the limit for our jacking stress is 0.7 times the ultimate strength of the strand, um, so 245 KSI. And our service stress limit uh, for CFRP strands is 0.65 times uh, the ultimate strength, so 227.5. We're going to assume that we jack these strands up in, to the um, jacking stress limit, so we'll assume that the stress in the strands at jacking is 245 KSI. Uh, we'll assume our losses uh, are 12.3 KSI for elastic shortening, and 44.1 KSI for our, our total losses. Um, you would calculate losses the same as conventional strands. Uh, the only difference is uh, there's a, a slight difference um, or different procedure for calculating the relaxation losses for CFRP strands. Um, finally, we need to find our concrete stiffness, which is 4,400 and uh, 15 KSI, and our strand eccentricity, which is uh, the distance between the centroid of our section, um, 10.2, and the centroid of our strands, um, 20 inches. So uh, we have an eccentricity of our strands of 9.8 inches. The first step in our solution is to calculate the locked in strain at the time of ultimate loading. To do, to do this, we need to first find our effective pre-stress. So our effective pre-stress is the stress at jacking, 245 KSI, minus our total losses, uh, 44.1 KSI, which will give us an uh, effective pre-stress of 200.9 KSI. Our effective strain then is just this Effective stress, 200.9 KSI, divided by the stiffness of our CFRP strands, uh, which is 22,500 KSI, uh, which will give us a strain of 0 0.00893. Uh, the effective pre-stress force, then, is our effective stress. 200.9 KSI times our area of our pre-stressing, 1.08 square inches, uh, which will give us an effective force of 217.0 um, kips. Next, we can find our decompression strain. Um, so our decompression strain is our uh, effective pre-stress force, 217 kips divided by our gross area, 360 square inches, times our stiffness, 4,415 KSI. And then we need to add here our effective pre-stress force, 217, times our eccentricity squared, divided by I gross, 18,706 inches to the fourth, times our concrete stiffness, 4,415 KSI. 
and this will equal 3.89 times 10 to the negative fourth. So next, our next step is to um, iterate to solve for our pre-stressing strain at ultimate strength. Um, we need to either assume that our CFRP strands rupture or that our concrete crushes in the extreme compression fiber first. Um, so here we're going to assume that our uh, CFRP strands rupture first um, before our concrete crushes. So we'll assume that our strand stress is, is the ultimate uh, strength of the strand, 350 KSI. Um, we can then calculate the strain in the strand um, because our CFRP is linear elastic until it ruptures. So we just take the 350 divided by the stiffness of the strand to find the strain um, at the ultimate strength of the strand. And then we need to make a guess at our top fiber strain in our concrete. Um, we're going to make a good guess. I, I um, iterated already, uh, so this is a, a good first guess uh, for our top fiber strain. Um, so this is what we'll use in the uh, rest of the uh, problem. We next need to calculate our rectangular stress block coefficients. Um, so there are uh, specified um, rectangular stress block coefficients for uh, finding the um, depth and width of our stress block um, if we're less than, or if we have a, a top fiber strain that's less than 0 0.003. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is uh, find this e uh, epsilon prime c term. Uh, so a given expression here is 1.6 plus our f prime c, which is 6 ksi, divided by 11. Um, times 10 to the negative third uh, will give us a value here of 0 0.00215. All right, so we can use uh, this strain at ultimate strength in our concrete in our beta 1 and alpha 1 uh, equations. So our beta 1, uh, plugging in our known values, we have uh, beta 1 is equal to 4 minus uh, epsilon cc, which we're assuming at the beginning, divided by the epsilon prime c, which we found, uh, which is dependent on our concrete strength. And then we divide this by 6 minus 2 times the same term, so 0 0.0019 divided by 0 0.00215. And then all this times 1.1 minus uh, 6 KSI divided by 50. So we'll get a beta 1 term here of 0 0.722, um, which is greater than 0.65. So we'll use 0 0.722 as our beta 1. Uh, next, we need to find our alpha 1. So our alpha 1 is going to be equal to 1 divided by our beta 1, which we just found, 0.722, uh, times the ratio of our top fiber strain to our uh, strain at ultimate, so in our concrete, so 0 0.0019, which is, again, the assumed value, uh, divided by 0 0.00215, minus 1 third times the same ratio squared, and then all this times 1 minus our 6 KSI divided by 60. Um, so this will give us an alpha 1 value of 0 0.778. Um, so this is our, our alpha 1 value, which um, will define the depth of our compression block. Um, and the beta 1, which helps define the height of our compression block. So now we have the area of our, our compression block, which we can use in the next step. We next need to calculate the uh, depth of our equivalent rectangular stress block with our assumed FPS and our assumed uh, top fiber strain in our uh, concrete. Um, so we can start from equilibrium. On our tension side, we just have our strands. So we have uh, A, 
FPS times FPS. Um, so that's our tension side of the equ equation. Uh, on com the compression side, we only have our stress block um, that's over the area that I'm highlighting here. So we have our base width, or the, the width of our um, top flange, and then the depth is A. So B times A times the applied stress over that block, um, alpha 1 uh, times F prime C. So solving for A, which is our unknown, we get, uh, or we can find our compression block depth. Uh, so we know our area of our strands, point, or uh, one point, 1.08 inches squared times our assumed stress. We're again assuming that our strands rupture before the concrete crushes uh, times our alpha one, which we found on the last slide, 0 0.778 times 6 KSI times our B, which we know is 24 inches. Uh, so we'll find an, uh, an A of 3.8. 37 inches. Um, so we can see here this 3.37, uh, our height of our top flange is 6 inches. So our A is still in the top flange. So um, that's, that's good. We can just um, move forward with our analysis. Uh, we can then find our neutral axis depth. Um, so our C is just A divided by beta 1C. So our A is 3.37 divided by our beta 1, which we found on the last slide, 0.722, uh, which will give us a C value of 4.67 inches. So the last part of step two is to make sure that our, our um, assumed strain is correct. Um, so we need to start by uh, finding or finding an, an equation for our top fiber um, strain and we're just doing that based on um, our strain diagram and assuming that our strain varies linearly across the, the cross-section depth. So the strain in the top fiber epsilon cc is equal to our strain in our uh, our pre-stressing at time of failure which we're assuming our strands are rupturing so our strain is 0.0156 uh, minus our effective strain, 0 0.00893, minus our decompression strain, uh, which again we found earlier, 3.89 times 10 to the negative fourth. And then all this times C, 4.67, which we found on the last slide, divided by 20 our D minus 4.67. Uh, so we'll get this to equal 0 0.00191, um, which is about equal to our assumed strain. So we know we're, we're correct here. Um, if, you know, if we had a different value here, then we would need to assume uh, or you know, go back and, and uh, change our top fiber strain. And if we found this was greater than 0 0.003, then actually our concrete would crush. Um, so we would need to change that assumption as well, uh, which we'll do on a different example. Now that we have our uh, top fiber strain confirmed, um, we can go to our stress and force diagram to calculate our, our nominal moment. So our nominal moment then is just uh, MN is equal to our total area of our pre-stressing um, 1.08 times 350 KSI uh, times our D 20 inches minus A over 2 3.37 divided by 2 uh, which will give us a nominal moment here of 6,922 kip inches. Um, the resistance factor that's proposed for CFRP is um, 0.75, so we'll take our 
nominal moment uh, times 0.75 to get our phi mn. Uh, which will give us a value of 6,278 uh, gif inches. Um, so that's how we find our uh, factored um, nominal moment for a section with CFRP strands.